Hello everybody and welcome to my night routine at the barn and today we are prepping for a winter storm that's going to hit in the morning. So the first thing we need to do is go get Kite out of his pasture. He got to be out all day today because it was sunny before the temperature drop. So I have to walk quite a bit to go get him and it was dark. So I left you in here while I did that but oh look there's Kite. The reason we are getting him first tonight is I don't want him out there when the temperature really drops. It gets to, I think, 13 degrees this night. So I didn't want him out there when it really started to get cold and the wind picked up. So we get him in and into his stall. You'll notice there's a lot more horses in here right now. It's because they normally live in the pasture, but they all came in due to the winter storm we are expecting. I get his halter off and then make sure to shut his door because Kite will leave. He is smarter than me sometimes, so I have to make sure I keep him from escaping. There I close his little panel so he can't push it open himself. And we're going to throw him some alfalfa to snack on while we do the other chores before they get their dinner tonight. So he immediately starts snacking on that. And we get to go deal with the other ponies. I shut that garage door so no wind can get in and it keeps it really, really warm in this barn. See, I got a little hot had to take off my big coat but i am thankful for that this barn really holds in heat nicely i go into chester's stall and get him out while it is cold like this and they're not out their normal amount i do get them out and walk them each around for about 10 minutes so chester is gonna go first i'm just gonna kind of walk him around the barn and the little indoor arena part really get him stretched out get his legs moving i just really don't like for them to be stuck in the stalls like that so we are gonna get him out and get him walking real quick i set a timer on my phone for 10 minutes exactly so you'll see us walking around back and forth in the barn <laughs> I feel like this looks really dramatic but chester is very allergic to bermuda hay so i don't like him getting any of it it makes him really inflamed and he is very very terribly allergic so i am not gonna let him eat any of it and if he does get some in his mouth i normally stick my hand right up in there and pull it out When my timer on my phone goes off, since it has been 10 minutes, I am going to stick him in the wash rack. He's very impatient, so he doesn't love the wash rack, but I don't have anywhere else to put him, so this is where he's going to go while we get his stall clean. So I get those cross ties on him, throw his lead rope up over his neck, and get to work. So I go and grab the wheelbarrow and bring it into his stall i'm using my little wheelbarrow today his stall shouldn't be too terrible because i have been cleaning them twice a day so i clean them once in the morning and then once at night during each routine just to keep it really clean for them soft and dry especially so i get my wheelbarrow in the stall grab my pick and turn on the light so i can see what i am doing and i start sifting so i try to sift everything out so i can keep as many good shavings as possible but if there are any wet shavings i do get them all out i don't want them standing on wet at all i do not leave that in there i don't flip the shavings over I just get them out completely so we're starting to fill up that wheelbarrow and I get to his pee spot right here you can kind of tell he pees a lot but thankfully he pees in just one spot so that makes my life a lot easier here
Now you can see that I pretty much have everything sifted out. I've dug out that pea spot, so now I'm going to scrape down from the sides of the stall. I don't like bedding getting built up against the wall, and they also like to hide a lot of stuff in here, so you need to make sure that you can get it out. Otherwise, it's just a little gross, so I scrape down from the sides of the stall and then continue sifting out what I find until the stall is level and up to my standards. Having these stall mats in here makes my life so much easier when it comes to cleaning the stalls. It's so much easier to level it out and you don't have to dig at all and worry about it getting uneven, so I've been really enjoying that. Here you can see I'm still just really scraping around, making sure I get everything before I move on to Dakota. Once I decide that the stall is up to my standards, I push the wheelbarrow out out of the way and go after his water buckets. I normally dump them about twice a day. Chester drinks a lot of water usually, which is really good in the winter, but he loves to rinse his mouth out, so he kind of gets his buckets really dirty. I get them off their little bucket holders and head off to the drain where I can pour them out and decide whether or not I need to actually rinse them out with the water hose. For now, we're going to set them aside. We are also going to bust out the heated buckets today. I grab two bags of Fine Flakes shavings. I really like these because they're not too dusty and they sift pretty well. I really like that. I throw the bags into the stall before busting them open. Chester's being so, so patient in there, of course. He's always so patient. I get the shavings out of the bag. First bag kind of goes in the corner where his pea spot is, and then this goes directly across. I really want to make sure they have really nice beds for the winter, keep them a little bit warmer, keep them cozy while they're trapped inside. Don't want them getting, you know, cabin fever here and the best way i know to spread these shavings is to kick them before you use the pick the first bag actually fell pretty well but this one was a little more compressed so i'm gonna try and spread these out fairly even but i do try to keep more over where he likes to use the bathroom i am very thankful that he likes to use the bathroom pretty much in only one place due to cleaning but um, I like to keep more shavings over in that spot. It's looking really nice and cozy, so I go get him out of those cross ties because he's been begging me to and get him back in his nice comfy stall. Once I get him in there and turned around, I pull his halter off and shut his door. And of course, he is already begging me for food. So I hang his halter up and make sure I get the lead rope up off the ground before we get Dakota out. So I'm going to open Dakota's door and get his halter on because he also needs to walk for 10 minutes. Again, just keeping everything moving, everything in their body moving, keeping them from being sore and also kind of letting them see things that aren't just in their stall. So I walk him around just like I did Chester through the barn area over here, through the little indoor arena area where I could walk. So I just set another 10 minute timer on my phone and everybody was watching us as we walked back and forth and back and forth. So I did get my 10,000 steps this day so if you need to be motivated to do that this is a good way uh most of their pasture was frozen so i did just keep them inside today and now i'm gonna get him in the wash rack and realize that i totally clipped the lead rope on the wrong ring but he's so good that it doesn't really matter so he's gonna also stand in the wash rack but before we get to cleaning his nasty stall he is going to nebulize so he hasn't been feeling his greatest, so we're going to really open up his airways here with the nebulizer. So you've probably seen one with people before, but it's nice and I would say steamy, so it's really good for their throats, really opens them up. I fill up the cup with some silver and then connect it to the nebulizer and get it on. He is not a giant fan. I undo the cross ties so I can get it up over his nose and I want to do this in the cross ties because sometimes he likes to sling his head around and try and break it. So when he's in the cross ties there's nothing he can hit to get it off. This thing is really expensive so I don't need him slamming it into a wall and breaking it. Once I have it on and going I do the cross ties so I can just leave him here and he of course is being really really dramatic about this. 
He is not a giant fan, but it is really good for them. I do it before they run sometimes too. I also need to charge my nebulizer. Ignore that. Now I'm going to pull that wheelbarrow into Dakota's stall and start getting to work. It actually wasn't too bad. Again, I cleaned it in the morning too, but he does not have a designated pee spot. So what he does is he pees wherever and then mixes all the shavings together. So he uses more shavings than any of the other horses because he likes to walk around and mix it all up in the middle of his stall. So we're going to start scraping down, seeing what he has hidden because he likes to push all of his fresh shavings up against the wall. Once his stall is done, I'm going to push that wheelbarrow out and grab him a bag of the fine flake shavings, get it in there and start spreading it around. I want their stalls to be really, really soft on their feet since they're having to stand in here and I want them to be able to roll and lay down comfy. So <laughs> I'm going to flip it over dump it out and I did not have to kick this one thankfully and I'm going to spread it kind of evenly around his stall again he doesn't have a designated spot so I'm not very strategic when it comes to placing his shavings and ignore the fact that my pick is about to break in half it has had a very very hard life okay but it has served me well there's a look at his clean clean stall and he is almost done nebulizing, so we are going to grab out his water bucket and pour it as well. He doesn't normally get it as bad as Chester, but I do dump it out. We are also going to fill them up with some warm water, and I've added the heated buckets into the mix here, so that green bucket and that blue bucket are both heated. I spray out the green bucket, and I do eventually end up scrubbing it after this. I just didn't video it because they have been in our garage since last year. They have not seen the light of day, and they only come out every once in a while, but I do spray all of those buckets out good, making sure there's no alfalfa or anything gross in there stuck to the sides, and then I do spray the green one out a few times and then later I do scrub it. I just didn't video it. Here the nebulizer is finished nebulizing so I'm going to pull it off. He's going to be so happy. It is not his favorite thing ever. I give him some pets and some treats for his patience and for partaking in what I'm sure he thinks is a torture device but again it's really good for them. Now he can go into that fresh stall and roll if he wants to, lay down if he wants to. Um, I'm pretty sure every time I put them into a clean stall, they immediately poop. Every single time. So there I pull his halter off and he kind of tries to walk out so I make sure his door is shut. I hang up that Dr. Pepper halter and the lead rope and now we are going to clean the nebulizer out with some distilled water. You need to clean your nebulizer out every single time you use it right after and then there I run some distilled water through it and again shake that cup, get anything out of there and then start putting everything back into the box. Um, I take the battery out and spray in the inside of the nose part to get out any alfalfa and everything that they snort out of their nose while wearing it. And now we're going to kind of pack everything in and shut it. I do like that little container. I hang up the pick and now it is time to feed them, which is their favorite part of the day. I clean out their feed pans because they like to get them kind of gross. I try to pull them out before I leave, but I don't think I did the night before. So they're just a little grosser than normal. I get them in the feed room and set them out and we can start making their feed. Chester gets a scoop of Purina Senior and Dakota gets a cup and a half of high gain manga. They both get salt on their feed and nothing else at night. All the supplements are just in the morning. Here I am being Chester's Uber Eats. His Uber Eats has arrived and he's very, very excited about it. He like unhinged his jaw and took the biggest bite ever and now Dakota's turn. He is much nicer of a customer to his delivery driver. Very, very calm. So I set that in for him and he gets started eating. We can go feed Kite too. So he gets a feed scoop full and then I do put some salt on there. It's really hard to get him to drink, especially in the winter. So now we're going to go deliver it to him. He eats out of a bucket hanging on this panel up here. So we're just going to pour it in there. He is so excited. He's normally 
fairly aggressive about his food. He's 23 and he's always been that way so I don't think he's ever going to change and then I throw him some alfalfa too. Forage keeps them really really warm. It helps them produce more body heat so I always want to make sure that they have plenty to eat when it's cold like this. Now that he has his alfalfa in there we're going to pull out his black blanket to put on him. All of these blankets are from Snyder's and I really do like them a lot. They have the clothes front and the belly band which I think is safer because there is isn't as much stuff for them to get caught in like those straps and I kind of have to chase him. The clothes front makes it a little harder for horses that really don't like blankets because you have to put it completely over their head so Kite always tries to run and hide from me but here he's looking cute while I get his blankets situated. Um, he eventually did try to walk out though and I thought he was about to run over the camera. So I do end up shutting the door here while I do that belly band and the leg straps and then he is He's done so and he rolls in his blankie a little later. So he got himself a really good scratch in. I don't think I've met a horse that hates blankets as much as him, but sorry, Kite, when it is 10 degrees, you're going to have to wear one. Now we're going to go fill up Mr.'s hay net, and it is from Halo Hay Nets, if you're wondering, and he gets two flakes this night, and I think I also threw him some on the ground, and there I'm cutting the bale with the world's tiniest scissors. I do not recommend it. I do really like these hay bags. I'm not sponsored, but I do use them every single day. They're super easy to fill up so now i'm gonna go give him his alfalfa since he's already gobbled up all of his food and is starving again so he gets to attacking that hay net immediately and now we're gonna build the forager so that dakota can have a lot of forage in his stall he took it apart one day so we're putting it back together now he's normally not too mean to it so i'm pushing down the ring that goes on top securing it and now we're gonna fill it all the way up with some alfalfa so I'm carrying three flakes in and I drop them into the forager but I also really tear them apart to make it easier to put the ring over them and also to make it a little easier for him to get it. This one is a really slow feed so I don't mind filling it all the way up at night. Sometimes I'll get back here in the morning and he will still have some left so I really like that and I like when they discover that their alfalfa is not limited and they can take a break when they want to. So here I'm just really getting it in there spraying out any dust that's on it and then putting in the regulator this is what's going to cause it to be a slow feed hook the regulator to that ring grab out his feed pan since he's done eating so i can't make it nasty and then roll his forager in here it's really not all that heavy i would say the alfalfa is probably the heaviest part and he just could not wait to eat this alfalfa it, he did not want to let me roll it in here in Peace. Um, so now that he is eating out of the forager and he's happy and being weird, we are going to go start working on some mashes. So I grab a bucket and fill the bottom up with some shredded alfalfa, throw some electrolytes in both mashes and then Dakota will only eat antibiotics and a mash so I throw them in there. Fill both mashes up with some nice warm water for them. I'm making one mash for Dakota and one for Chester. They both have all that shredded alfalfa in the bottom and now I'm filling it up with warm water and they both got electrolytes too. I mix it up making sure the alfalfa is soaking up all the water and then take it to them and Dakota is um, moving his forager around as he does and I guess did not care that I was standing right there trying to hang up his mash. So he almost knocked me completely over. He immediately goes to his mash to check it out and start eating. Chester is a little more aggressive about his mashes and I really am making him one to get a bunch of more water in him, making sure he is drinking enough and enjoying a little mash. It's like a fun little treat. Now I'm going to get the water. So I'm filling their buckets probably two thirds of the way up with hot water and then I'm going to hang it and use the water hose to finish filling the bucket up with cold water so this balances out makes it about the right temperature nice and warm so I carry them from the water hose over there into their stalls and hang them on their little bucket holders and they each are going to have one heated bucket tonight so I'm putting warm water in one and then the heated buckets will warm up the water themselves you can see Chester there tearing up his mesh and now it's time for blankets we're getting close to done here for the night uh, they have the same blanket that Kite has so it goes over their heads but they are a little less dramatic about it 
here I'm just making sure everything is in the right place that it's comfy and not crooked or anything and he's still working on that forager he never stops I don't think and now it's time for Chester to get his blanket on again it's the exact same blanket it takes me a little bit to get his head through it though just because he doesn't want to stop eating from his hay net but they are both really good about these blankets I'm pleasantly surprised by that they got used to them really really fast I do the belly band up and get those leg straps clipped this is going to keep them nice and cozy and warm tonight. I make sure their stalls are both shut. And here I have a video to prove it. And it's time for them to go to sleep. Thanks for watching. Bye.